Hey guys, Big Swear, RoadToRuda.com, coming to you from the Jeep. Um, really, really exciting stuff. I discovered this morning when I woke up, uh, guys sent me an email with a link to a video on um, this guy out of Denver who's doing research in the Grand Canyon. My One of my favorite topics, I've been doing research on that for a couple years now. Here and there, here and there. Will the book ever come out? I don't know. I, you know, I don't know. Uh, it won't make gold bugs real happy because it talks about the millions of tons of gold that are available to the United States. But a uh, really interesting uh, video on a plane crash within the Grand Canyon in the one of these spots that I've been researching. And this plane crash happened in 1956. It was one of the largest plane crashes in US aviation history. Uh, like 128 people died. It was united, collided with a TWA flight. And if you, if you remember, I mean, you wouldn't remember if, unless you were alive in 1956. Uh, planes, there were not a lot of huge jets in the sky. So the odds of a the largest plane crash in the world happening right above the exact spot where it is uh, suspected that the gold in the Grand Canyon's hidden, all the uh, ancient uh, archaeological sites with the uh, temples and the pyramids and and all this stuff. And if you do any research into the Kincaid, the Kincaid article from the Arizona Gazette. In 1909, that is not conspiracy theory, my friends. That is fact. Absolute fact. You're still not allowed to go in this area because they don't really give a reason. Over 90% of the caves in the Grand Canyon have not been explored um, because they won't let you go there. You're not allowed, humanity. You're not allowed to go there. And uh, But this, this video is really cool because it had a couple of links. One was to a site that they have in 2011 they uh, made an application to designate this spot in the Grand Canyon from the 1956 crash as a historical landmark uh, which gives it all these rights that you know you can't go there basically um, but in the report they gave they published the 1956 um, uh, I think it's a report, aviation report on the crash, and they redacted about half of it. Anything related to the location it was blacked out. And this guy's like, he called called the uh, um, Grand Canyon, you know, whoever, whichever agency was in charge of it, and said, well, why is this blacked out? Can I get, you know, this entire report? And they said, no, that's it. That's all they said, no, you can't have it. Well, it is very clear to me that they're hiding a lot of things there at that site. And very odd that they're uh, all of a sudden um, trying to claim this thing's a national uh, archaeological, historical arch archaeological site. When, what do we, you know, it's 1956 was a damn long time ago, if you ask me. Uh, but just more fuel for the fact that there's massive hidden secrets within the Grand Canyon. A lot going on there. Do I? One of the things about the report in 1956, uh, the aviation report, was that they claimed that the majority of the components of both airplanes, which are pretty big airplanes, I mean, not the monsters we have today, but you know, if 126, 128 people died, they were pretty big planes. The majority of the larger components disintegrated upon impact. Doesn't that remind you a little of uh, the uh, plane that supposedly flew into the Pentagon that disintegrated and the one that flew into the ground in Pennsylvania that disintegrated? Planes don't disintegrate, my friends. They just don't disintegrate. <laughs> but they, in this report, it claimed it disintegrated and they showed an interesting thing is there's some pictures of the uh, of where it crashed. It looks really bizarre and weird and uh, it doesn't look like a plane crash at all. And a lot of conspiracy stories grew up around it, but nobody, I mean, I'll guarantee you, unless you saw this video, you have never heard of the largest uh, plane crash in history up until the 1950s 
was uh, these two planes that crashed into to each other in midair and just happened to fall right on the spot where they're hiding all this stuff from humanity about the ancient civilizations that lived there. All the uh, they're not really hiding it. I mean, you look at the Grand Canyon; all the all the mountains are named after uh, Egyptian gods and. This was just north of uh, Jupiter Temple, uh, which is the confluence of the Little Colorado River and the Colorado River. And that is the supposed area, you know, nobody's really known exactly where it was, um, where Kincaid uh, and uh, those guys from the Smithsonian did, were doing all their research and finding all these uh, Egyptian artifacts, is what they called them at the time. Um, I would call them you know, pre-civilization, pre-modern uh, history type of civilizations. Uh, but yeah, the very same spot, crazy stuff, crazy stuff. Um, I don't know what could have happened. It might have been a missile that was shot down or something. They were trying to destroy this part of the Grand Canyon to hide the gold maybe. I don't know. I truthfully don't know. So. Uh, I wish they would open up this story to humanity. I think at some point when the good guys win and this insane world we're living in starts to reveal secrets and, and in Cliff High's uh, WebBot data, that's what exactly what happens. The US runs out of uh, purchasing power with the dollar and everybody who is being paid off to keep these secrets um, go out and try to make a living by selling these secrets. So the secrets of the Grand Canyon are going to be monsters and very exciting for humanity. Uh, what will it do to gold? Who knows? Who knows? The price of gold is, is irrelevant. It's rigged with computers and derivatives. And it always will be until we go off the monetary system that we're on. So yes, we do have a lot of gold laying in wait for us. Not only the Grand Canyon, all over the United States and military bases in um, desert wildlife preserves Diane Feinstein I don't even know the acreage anymore of the uh, land she has put into the desert wildlife preserve in, in Southern California uh, all gold rich areas including Chocolate Mountain which uh, was announced back in you know it was a big fight over it in the 90s the largest gold mine ever found in the world was put into a military base um, so it's a lot of intrigue and excitement around gold, around silver, although I, I don't think silver will be used as money. I think gold will be used as money. I think uh, as part of the crypto uh, verse that we're walking into, um, there will be a gold component if you want to play with gold and there will be a lot of gold to use as money and that's cool. Uh, we need as many... Uh, monetary instruments outside of the unbacked fiat money that will be destroyed when the derivative bomb goes off. So there's no, nothing wrong with both cryptos and uh, physical gold. Uh, silver I think is too valuable to use as money. I think silver will be needed in other uh, new technologies that will be coming out that are already starting, truthfully. Uh, if you look at the all the advancements in material science and things like that. Cliff talks about it in our Three Amigos interview a little bit. Uh, but I do think that silver will be uh, increasingly more valuable as the markets change. Obviously, the, the comics and the LBMA need to go away. Um, but I don't think they're going to crash. I, I think at some point they're going to run out of the ability to uh, obtain uh, physical silver because the miners will stop selling to these criminals and, and shooting themselves in the foot. The miners need to wake up and they can't do anything right now. But when they do figure this out, they will be um, working with different exchanges, peer-to-peer -peer exchanges. And then all of a sudden you'll see the availability of physical on the comics and the LBMA uh, probably instantly go away because who would want to sell their physical silver on an exchange that you know rigs the price lower? And if the uh, manufacturers can't get their silver from the LBMA and from the COMEX, then they're gonna have to go to other places and then that's where we get the peer-to-peer -peer networks, the peer-to-peer -peer exchanges such as, uh, they can utilize Veritasium. I know there's a lot of uh, uh, attempts at building a, a gold or silver backed 
or uh, a tokenized world for gold and silver. Uh, it'll be interesting how that develops. Cliff has kind of an idea how it is played out in his data, uh, but it does sound like a peer to peer to peer to peer type of situation where it goes, uh, basically the, the exchanges are taken out and the, um, the miners deal with the refiners, deal with the end users in a different way without going to the criminalized exchanges. Really exciting stuff there and I'm excited about that. Anyway, uh, I have a interview with V the Gorilla uh, this morning and we will talk about the Grand Canyon discoveries. I'll give more information there. So make sure you tune in live or it will be posted on Rogue Money, uh, the Rogue Money website. And I'll probably post it on the uh, Road to Ruta website. Make sure you sign up at the Road to Ruta YouTube channel. Lots of good stuff coming down the pike about the Grand Canyon. It's Big Square. We'll talk to you later.